Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going to, be going, going to be going over all the different body regions and the different planes we find on the body. So I'm using the video of Dr. Captain Jack Merrow here again. There's good old Watson. Uh, this is the video I use for the directional terms, uh, but I want to also use it to go over the different regions in the body. Uh, it's a good way we can use to represent it. Uh, so let's just go back to this main image right here. And let's bring up our pen. Now let's first talk about the different body planes we have. The first one we have is called, let's increase the stroke size here just a little bit, is called the sagittal plane. So what is the sagittal plane? Sagittal plane separates left and right. So imagine taking a section and actually chopping something in half like this. So it separates left and right side. Let's see here showing the skeleton. So if you're looking at a sagittal section of the skull, now mid-sagittal would be one directly on this imaginary midline going down the body. So that would be mid-sagittal. So if you took a mid-sagittal section of the skull right here, it'd be right down the middle of the skull, separating it into left and right. Um, now, if, let's erase our little lines here, you can also have a parasagittal section, which means it's next to the sagittal. And sometimes you might see a para, parasagittal section to show different anatomical features of a certain organ or so forth. Okay, so now the next plane is called the frontal. Sometimes you see this one referred to as the coronal section. So this separates front and back. Now I don't have a side angle of the skeleton here, but imagine separating anterior and posterior. So cutting it down sideways here, imagine a section going all the way down the side here and cutting it into the, f so separating the front of it and the back of it. Um, there is a nice little representation here on the skull. So I do zoom in here um, a little bit on the skull right here. This little suture on the skull, that's called the coronal suture. And it gets its name because it separates front and back, anterior versus posterior. So there we can use that representation as a way to study these different planes. And then the last type of plane we have is called a transverse, also known as a horizontal plane. Now this separates inferior and superior. So if we took a horizontal or transverse section of the skull, it's just cutting it right in half. So that's a cross section is what that makes. Now you can also go, so this would be if it was 90 degrees, if it was anything other than 90 degrees, it would be an oblique section. Uh, so if you do a different angle, it would be an oblique section. All right, so those are the different sections right there. Now what I want to do is go over the different regions we have in the body. I'm not going to write all these down. I'm kind of just going to talk about them as we go through them here. So just going, th f starting with the skull right here, a good place to start. So right here, this is the frontal region on the skull. Um, so we have all these different regional terms in the body, just a little introduction to the regional terms. And they're very important because they can help you name other anatomical features in that region. So. On the skull right here, this is called the frontal region, you know, the forehead region. This is also called the frontal bone of your skull. And then there's a lobe of your brain in there called the frontal lobe. So if you remember this was the frontal region, you get a good idea of how to name the rest of it too. So right here is the frontal region. The eyes are in the orbital regions. Nose is the nasal region. Mouth is the oral region. And the chin is the mental region. So if we actually... You can see these little foramens down here on the chin. These are called the mental foramens. So if you know a foramen, we'll get to the skeletal system later this semester. A foramen is a small hole, and this is called the mental foramen. You have a good idea of where to look. Um, so I'll turn the skeleton around again later. Right now, we're just focused on the anterior or ventral side in naming. Uh, so then I go around that, go around that, and now let's go down to the thoracic region. So here, this is the thoracic region. Um, you know, everything contained within the rib cage. And below the diaphragm is the abdominal pelvic region or the abdominal region. So here, looking at the thoracic region, this is the sternum or the sternal region. Uh, we have the mammary uh, region 
And then we have the axillary region, which is the armpit. There you have your axillary veins, arteries, um, lymph nodes. So if you know what the axillary means, you know where it is. Uh, shoulder then, this is the acromial region. This is actually the acromion process of the scapula. So that helps you name that. And we'll talk about the different processes on the scapula or the acromial end of the clavicle is right there. So it helps you know which direction things are facing. Um, tells you it's towards the acromial end. And then we have the upper arm here, which is the brachial region. And then you have the inside of the elbow. So in anatomical position, the inside is actually the one facing forward. Um, so that is called the uh, anticubital. Don't screw that up with the antibrachial, which is in forearm. Um, and then when I turn it around, I'll tell you the olecranon is the, the backside of the elbow, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, and then moving down here, we get to the hand. I think I go to the hand. So the hand here, the manus is the hand. A carpal is wrist. So down at the feet, then a tarsal is talking about the bones in the feet. So here, carpal is wrist. Um, so then the different parts of the wrist, we then have the palmar region, which is the palm. Remember, this is facing outward. So the thumb or the pollex region is over here. And then the fingers are all digits. I know uh, the skeleton isn't perfect. The hands are a little misshapen from being moved around. Uh, but digital, palmar, pollex, and then carpal. Uh, so carpal tunnel is that right there. So that uh, is most of the arm. I'll talk about a couple more when we get to the uh, posterior side. But now we have the, go up back up to the abdominal region right here, uh, where, where the um, belly button is. That's the umbilical region of the abdom abdominal region. And then the pelvic region uh, down here by the pelvis also includes the groin, which is the inguinal region. And then also uh, genital region is then uh, the pubic area. So this is called the pubic symphysis, which happens to be in the pubic region. Then when we go down the leg, so, oh, hip, uh, hip here is also coxal. The coxal region is also known as the hip. We go down the leg, this is the femur or the femoral region. We'll come across the femoral vein, femoral artery, and so forth when we get there. And this is the femur, it's where it all gets its name. So we put all these together, it helps you name these different parts. Uh, and then we have the patellar region. This is the front of your knee, the back of your knee we'll get to. is called the popliteal region. Uh, and then we go down to the actual leg. The shin part is called the coral part of your leg. Uh, C-R-U-R-A-L. Uh, coral is the front of the leg. The back of the leg, we'll get to that one for the calf as well. Uh, and then on the side here is the fibular region. This is the fibula. L for lateral, that's how you want to remember that. And then down here at the foot, uh, we have the tarsal. Foot is also known as the pedal. Um, so that's where pedals come from. So tarsals are the bones down here. Uh, tarsal stands for ankle. And then you can have your metatarsals, uh, your digitals, and your big toe is known as your hallux. Okay, so now let's go back to the posterior side and see if there's anything else we missed. Um, so the bottom of your foot, I don't have a good representation of it here. Hold on, let me flip the skeleton around and work our way back up. Uh, the bottom of the foot is called the plantar region. The heel bone back here is called the calcaneus. That's the calcaneal region. And then the calf region is called the sural region. And then back of the knee here is the popliteal region. There's a little popliteal vein and a popliteal artery that run through there. Um, and then going back up, oh, so between um, this region back here, right below the coccyx, uh, so we have the gluteal region, gluteus maximus muscle, and you also have the perineal region as well. Then right here is the sacrum. This is the sacral region. So you get I know we, this is very overwhelming if you are new to anatomy and physiology, but you'll see once we start going through all the systems, naming the different bones, naming the different muscles, understanding these regional names become very important. Um, and then we also have the vertebrae. They come in different regions as well. So here, cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, um, then we have the lumbar vertebrae down here, the bottom five, and then we have the sacral region. So all my skeleton has a little scoliosis here, but it's okay. On the backside here, the scapula or in the scapular 
region. Um, and then, like I said, the back of the elbow is called the olecranon or the olecranal region. Uh, and then, so the cervical, and then the back of the head. Oh, yeah. So back of the head is the last one, occipital. And then the last one is the otic region, which is the ear. I forgot that on the uh, anterior side. So occipital and otic for ear. Now, the whole head region is also termed cephalic. So whenever you see the prefix C-E-P-H, like in cephalic, it means a head-like feature. Um, you see that on different organisms and so forth. So if I go back and play over this one more time, that's all the main regions that we're going to be talking about throughout the semester here for ANP1. Uh, so if you do have any questions on this, please let me know and just do like I did here. Play through this video. See if you can label all of these images or not the images, the regions. How many can you get? Uh, give yourself like little tests and things like that uh, because, like I said, understanding these words are really important for understanding the different bones. So like on the back of the skull there, I called that the occipital region. That's where you have the occipital bone and the occipital lobe. There's an occipital condyle down there. So if you get that region name down, everything else in that region comes into play. So if I ask you where the occipital condyle is, if you know where the occipital region is and you know what an, a condyle is, you can make a good guess of where that is. All right, but that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And I hope you all have a great day and bye-bye.